Recoil management is often taught about reducing muzzle climb, but what if I told you that was only half the picture? Today we're going to help you with your marksmanship at speed through grip and stance. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Armory Life. I'm David from the Humble Marksman channel here on YouTube. Competition shooting has been the test bed for development of gear and technique basically since it's got its start. Red dots on rifles in the military have their roots in competition shooting, and it's no surprise that the handgun techniques currently being taught by law enforcement have their roots back in competition shooting as well. So we're going to take a look today at the current thinking of what competition shooting has for grip and stance and recoil management so that you can begin to utilize these skills in your own shooting. The video today is going to be dealing with recoil management, which is fundamental to competition pistol shooting, but it's helpful in self-defense and everything else because the goal of recoil management is to make the gun come back into alignment and settle down faster so you can fire an aimed shot quicker. Now, first and foremost, there are many different hand sizes and there are many different pistol sizes. And what I'm going to share with you today is going to be limited to my hand size on this pistol, but the concepts I'm teaching you will work on any pistol that you happen to have as long as you understand what's happening and apply them given the constraints of your hands on your pistol. And one of the worst things on the internet is when someone says, works for me. There are a lot of pistol grips that you can fire one accurate shot per second with because honestly recoil management doesn't matter at that cadence. But when you start shooting at four, five, or even six shots per second, that's when recoil management really matters. If you see guys at the range shooting and they have to readjust their grip on the pistol after every shot, that's a telltale sign that their grip is ineffective and the pistol's working its way free in recoil. So that's going to be our goal, guys, maintaining accuracy at five shot per second speed, which is equivalent to roughly as fast as you can pull the trigger. And my goal for you is going to be able to pull the trigger as fast as you can at a five inch circle at five yards and keep all the shots in the circle. So I'm at about seven yards. Every once in a while, it's going to be good to test yourself on using the head box on like a USPSA or an IDPA target. So I'm just going to present the gun to the target, get on the gun, and I'm just going to fire three or four shots to see if I can just run the trigger as fast as I can at seven yards and keep them all just on the head box. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. That's one, two, three, four shots right there. And that's the kind of recoil control that we want to have every time we pick up the gun. Work. Now recoil management is gonna be managing a couple different things. First and foremost, it's going to reduce the amount of muzzle climb when the slide is opening in a recoil. Furthermore, it is going to reduce the amount of muzzle dip when the slide closes in a recoil. A good grip is going to stabilize the gun through the trigger press so that a marginal trigger press delivers an acceptable hit. But most importantly, a good grip is going to make the sights act predictably, lifting straight up and down so that you can shoot at the speed of sight. Now it's worth noting that this is going to be the first in a series of videos cross-posted both on the Armory Life YouTube channel and here on the Humble Marksman channel on my channel. The release schedule is my channel will show up about two weeks later than what's posted on the Armory Life. So if you want the next installment as soon as it hits the press, then check it out at the Armory Life. There's gonna be a write-up on their website as well with more information you can work with. If you like this kind of content, you might consider joining Patreon. My Patreon page has my performance diary and all of my instructional type material is pretty much exclusively posted there. So consider joining up on Patreon. So building a good grip on the pistol. First and foremost, you're gonna to want to get as high as you can on the pistol. And that's going to mean get, filling up the space in the grip tang at the back of the gun, putting your hand up as high as you can. And there is zero air gap around the grip tang right there. Now, a lot of guns happen to have these thumb depressions right here on the frame, encouraging you to put your thumb down low like this. Don't fall for it. You wanna keep your thumb nice and high so that there is zero air gap around the grip tang. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna stabilize the yaw of the muzzle through the trigger pull. So just by keeping your thumb up like that, you're creating a nice pocket for your support hand and you're stabilizing the gun through the trigger pull. 
Now conceptualizing the slide opening, we've got a system of levers at play here. So it's gonna go to the back and lock. So when this bottoms out, that's when the muzzle is gonna lift. So we need to, if you think about this like a lever using that high school physics education, you're going to get as high as you can for as most mechanical advantage as you can get. And then you're going to put all your force as down low on your lever, which is what you're fighting this with, down low. So the direction of force from your hand is gonna be straight back into your palm. You do not put force on the gun through these three fingertips. That's gonna introduce instability as the muzzle's starting to lift. You want straight front to back pressure from your fingers, compressing the skin in your palm, so that the muzzle is gonna climb straight up with no up and to the right, down and left. If your grip is imbalanced, if you watch your sights, there's a good chance that it's gonna go up into your strong side, then down to your support side. So if you're shooting fast and your shots start moving down and to the left, if you're right-handed, that's probably why. So now that we've got our hand nice and high on the pistol, we have to really firm up this fulcrum we've got here. If you just kinda grip the pistol kinda casually, your skin is soft and the pistol is gonna bounce into you. Conceptualize it like shooting a 12 gauge shotgun. If you don't bear into it and lean into it, it's gonna beat up your shoulder. It's the same principle with your hand getting behind the grip tank. So you're want, gonna wanna put a lot of pressure pushing through the web of your hand into the grip tank. But similarly, you're gonna wanna make a nice even push all around the backside of the pistol. That's gonna be important here in a second. And you're probably thinking, my, those sure are lovely red base pads he has on his shiny chrome magazines. Why, yes, I know, thank you. And a big thank you to Springer Precision for helping make this possible. If you need aluminum stuff, maybe check out Springer Precision for your practical pistol needs. Now, building the grip with the support hand, still talking about the slide opening. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna get up under the trigger guard very, very high. And we're going to wrap around putting our hand in this nice pocket that we've made right here. The direction of force from your support hand is going to reinforce the same direction of your strong hand. So it's gonna be a very tight front to back squeeze. So you're gonna hook over the knuckles on your strong hand and you're gonna pull back into the gun and then you're gonna press into the gun like that. But now here's the second set of levers. And the thing that's often overlooked when talking about recoil management is when the slide closes. If you're getting a lot of muzzle bounce when the slide closes, there's two things at play. You've got a different fulcrum when the slide closes, and that's gonna be where your trigger guard makes contact with your pointer finger. So what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna want to actually kind of rotate your hand down, pushing your index finger up into the trigger guard. Some people like to get onto the front of the trigger guard, and that's okay too. If your frame is such that you can actually get purchase on the takedown lever like I can on the XDM Elite, you can actually use your thumb as an anchor point and create a pinch between the bottom of the trigger guard and your thumb. So you're applying pressure straight front to back like we discussed, and you're also applying pressure up into the trigger guard, and that's gonna do a couple things. So when the slide's opening up, if I'm pressing up into the trigger guard, I'm not breaking contact with the trigger guard so that when it comes down, it's not hitting my finger and then bouncing like this. So we wanna maintain contact with the trigger guard all the way through the recoil cycle. And by pushing upward into the trigger guard, we're gonna maintain that contact. The grip force that you're gonna be using through your hands is gonna be near 100% from your support hand and basically like swinging a hammer. Now we've all got different grip strengths. People who do a lot of things with their hands or do a lot of shooting are gonna have more developed muscles in their hands. So somebody like me is gonna say, I don't grip the gun that hard. But if you're somebody who doesn't do a lot of stuff with their hands, maybe a smaller stature, it's gonna feel like you're using a lot more grip strength. Regardless of what grip strength you use, you wanna maintain dexterity with your trigger finger. I use about as much grip strength as I would swing a hammer, but I'm also 6'5 and 230. So your mileage may vary. Now going back to with the slide closing, if you consider that when the slide's opening, we're pulling back here on our lever to pull the muzzle down, now we get the most advantage through pushing through the back of the gun. So by pushing up into the trigger guard with our support hand pointer finger, and similarly pushing through the heel of our strong hand palm, we're creating as much mechanical advantage as we can to manage the muzzle dip. So when I release the slide like this, there's hopefully very little bounce in the gun. And it just goes straight back into battery and doesn't oscillate too much. Now, the most important thing about marksmanship at speed is gonna be locking your angle of wrist. It doesn't matter how strong your grip is if you can't engage the tendons across your wrist and immobilize. So if you present your hand like you're gonna handshake, you notice you actually move at the elbow and at the shoulder, you don't actually move your wrist. This is setting your angle of wrist. 
If you really kind of focus on it, you can feel a little band of tension across the back of your wrist, and it's gonna be the same on both hands. Now, if you're not practiced at locking out those tendons, you're gonna get there faster and easier to experience it by squeezing as hard as you can through these two fingers on both hands. That's gonna create that tension. If you focus on the tension on the back of your wrist, and then you can begin to just actually flex the tendons but maintain dexterity in your fingers, that's what you wanna get. You wanna be able to flex these so hard that you begin to feel fatigued but still maintain the dexterity in your fingers. That's what we're gunning for in both hands. And if you need an example of how you can do that, try and fire five shots rapid fire, strong hand only at a very close target. Trying to go as fast as you can, holding the gun as flat as you can, you're gonna reflexively feel those tendons tighten up in your wrist as you try and fight the recoil with your strong hand. Similarly with your support hand. If you very loosely grip the gun and death grip with your support hand and pull the trigger as fast as you can on that same target, you're gonna feel the tendons at basically where my watch is lock out. And that's what you want every single time you pick up the gun. Next, let's talk about our elbows. Now, our elbows are gonna be kind of the next hinge in controlling recoil. You can see mine are kind of bowed out to the side and that's gonna be what you want. You're not gonna to wanna to have them tucked in like this because we've created a hinge that's gonna to wanna to let the muzzle climb at your elbow. We're gonna tuck them in like this so we're creating a spring that is gonna compress straight back and reduce the amount of muzzle climb that we experience through the gun. So when you're gripping the gun, you wanna roll your elbows out and almost point them parallel to the ground at the walls on either side, and that's gonna help you. And the next thing that's very, very important is you're going to lift the sights up to your eye. You are not gonna sink your head down behind the sights. This creates tension. In future videos, when we talk about other gun handling stuff in competition, that's gonna slow you down. If you're sunk down behind the sights of your gun like that, you're tensing up your shoulders, and it's just gonna start pushing you around more and more. Whereas if you stay loose throughout the shoulders, grip the gun only with your arms in the positions that we're talking about, you can stay very loose through your shoulders and core and swing the gun very quickly and precisely and shoot at maximum speed, and that's what our goal is. So we have our upper body and our grip on the gun basically maxed out, and what's nice about this is your lower body can be doing lots of things, and you can still manage the recoil of the gun but most importantly about this grip is that it's going to create a natural point of aim or an index. What we're ultimately driving at with this grip is that we can look at a place and lift the gun up and have these sights show up over what we're looking at, looking directly at the target. We're gonna learn how to do target focused shooting in this series. And once you can have the gun show up in alignment and then you just begin to drive your eyes and you're literally shooting at the speed of sight. And that's what the goal is in performance shooting. Now you may be thinking all of the forces that we're talking about putting in play is basically like gripping a set of pliers straight front to back. And it's gonna be like, well, that sounds a lot like a push pull and it can be. Some guys who have big strong arms are gonna be able to put enough force into the gun just using their arms. Smaller statured shooters are probably gonna to want to use their weight more by leaning into the gun and really getting aggressive. So stance is another component of recoil control that we're gonna discuss. So when we talk about stance, there's probably some of you saying how much of a stance do you really need? It's just a nine millimeter cartridge. While that's certainly true to an extent when we're talking about sustained strings of fire, the recoil has sort of a cumulative effect on you. So if you don't have a really efficient stance to transmit that recoil into the ground, you notice new shooters, they start like this, and by the end they're like this when they shoot a string of shots. That's happening to you whether you realize it or not. And if you want to test it and you've got a buddy, hold the gun with whatever stance you typically shoot with, then have them very slowly move the slide to the rear. If that starts to push you back behind your heels, your stance isn't good enough. The gun is doing that to you when you're shooting. You're just not aware of it. And smaller statured shooters are going to want to really use their body weight to the fullest in controlling the gun and recoil in their stance. So let's talk about what a good stance is going to look like. So a good stance is gonna be square to whatever we're aiming at. I'm not just pointing the gun at the target. I'm pointing my belt buckle. I'm pointing my sternum, the bridge of my nose, my feet, are opened up to the target at a roughly 45 degree angles. And that's gonna be good. First thing we're gonna do is get wide, wider than shoulder width, and then we're gonna step back with our strong foot like this. Then we're gonna put our center of weight forward over our front knee. So you're gonna basically bend forward at the waist and lean over the gun like this. You're gonna sink lower until you begin to feel your quads engaging. And this is gonna basically 
allow the recoil to go straight through your back leg into the ground. But more importantly, this is a fighter stance. If I need to absorb the recoil, I certainly can. If I have to take a hit, I can do that as well. But most importantly is I can begin running in any direction without having to lower my center of gravity loading up my legs, and then exploding out of position. So a good stance is not only gonna help you run faster, it's also gonna help you control recoil. So once we understand how we're supposed to build a grip on the gun, we need to test it with live fire. And unfortunately, there's not a way you can fake this in dry fire training. You are gonna have to actually spend rounds to make sure that you're getting the most out of your training. So we're gonna build our grip on the gun. I'm gonna get as high as I can, a straight front to back squeeze. I'm gonna set the angle of my wrist, set that tension push into the back of the gun real hard, both through the web of my hand and the heel of my palm. I'm up under on the trigger guard. I've locked out my left wrist and I'm pulling straight front to back. My elbows are rolled out to the side. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fire one shot at the black paster on my target and I'm gonna let the gun settle out of recoil wherever it's gonna settle out without me adjusting the aim and I'm gonna fire a second shot to see how close it is to where I was aiming initially. So here we go with the first shot. Okay, and you see right there, I went up and to the right onto the target at the very bottom of the head box. So that means I have an imbalance in my grip. It's going up and to the right, and that's not what I want. It's settled in high into the right. So I'm gonna push into the gun harder through my support hand to help try and bring that muzzle down. I'm gonna lock out my left wrist harder as well. Okay, everything's feeling good. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that was really good. Uh, the first shot is at the bottom of the second paster. The second shot is at the top of the paster. Both are on the paster. That's nearly perfect. So we're going to do the same thing again. I want to see if I can re replicate my success because I want to master skills, guys. I want to do it the same way every single time. So here we go. Oh, no, it didn't happen. I'm about three inches higher than I was on the first shot, which means I'm not bearing into the back of the gun and pushing it back down. So here we go. That was a pretty good one. So there we go on the last one. That was pretty good. I'm still not liking the way my sights are moving because the dot's not going straight up and down. It's going up and to the right. So what that's probably meaning is I'm not putting my pressure into the trigger guard in a straight up sort of manner. I'm probably pushing up and to the right through my support hand pointer. So I'm gonna try the same drill again using the same shots, but I'm gonna see if I can't get that straight up and down movement to go again. That was a good one. Oh, that was good. Those were real close together. Those were real close together. Yep. Those were almost touching. Okay, that was about an inch high. So I'm having to balance my grip. This is a drill that you can spend a lot of time and a lot of rounds on just maximizing your grip. And the goal is to shoot the same way every single time. Then once you understand what the tensions are and what it feels like, you're gonna build that grip get on target, and then you just wanna hold the gun like that and make sure that it feels right. Feel the tension in your wrist. Feel the skin compressing on your hands as you grip the gun. Where are your muscles getting fatigued? Create sort of a mental checklist when you have a correct rep on the drill so that when you grip the gun every single time, you've got your little pre-flight checklist to make sure that your grip is correct. So it sounds real straightforward and it is straightforward, it's just not easy. Doing it the same way every single time, using the right amount of force every single time and just feathering that trigger like you need to, that's the recipe for success when you're speed shooting. Now, let me know in the comments below what skills you want to see videos on in the future and maybe we can knock those out too. I'm David from the Humble Marksman channel here on YouTube. I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next one.